Aloha, everyone, and welcome to another Tinker's Academy video. I'm your host, Kay Elmer, and today I've got the pleasure of having a chat with Bob Greska of Greska's Carbon C60, and it is such a pleasure to have one of the most I just one of the most experienced scientists in, in the C60 space. And and Bob, thank you so much for uh, giving me some time today, and welcome. Yeah, great, Kay. It's uh, it's always good to be here and. Uh, I, I love this Carbon 60 product and, and everything that it does for people. So I'm, I'm glad to share my experiences and uh, knowledge about what it is and how it works. Awesome. So for those of you who uh, don't know or haven't heard of who Bob Gretzka is, let me just give you a, be a brief background. Um, Bob basically is a mechanical engineer, graduated from Southern, Southeastern Massachusetts University, uh, and you're a material scientist. I, I guess, you know, there's lots of people with degrees, but you focused in on carbon as a material scientist. So you're literally a carbon scientist. That's your, your career. Yeah. yeah. That, well, I, I studied non-metals in college as a mechanical yeah. engineer and material science. Yeah. And I focus in, I focus in on carbon. Carbon yeah, is like the center of the periodic chart, you know, yeah, works with it. <laughs> I know it's really interesting that, you know, that, that is, that is, you know, that's an incredible specialty and you've been doing that for all, all these years now. Uh, and so one of the things that makes, you know, Bob really unique is that he is literally a carbon scientist, uh, mechanical engineering specialty in carbon, and even more so, though, you know, he's an actual NASA scientist uh, under the uh, Lockheed Missile in Space. You were a contractor uh, for NASA under Lockheed. Uh, I believe you were a contractor for NASA under Martin Marietta Aerospace, and then you mm -hmm. did your own uh, engineering in 1990, right? You, you founded Engineering Innovations and started uh, your own company. So one of the, I think one of the highlights uh, of your career prior to getting into Carbon 60, uh, specifically uh, as, as, it was, as, you know, working with NASA is that you worked on the, uh, I guess you call it the, you were a materials specialist and process engineer overseeing the ceramic billets for the space shuttle Columbia, as well as working with Mary under Marietta, working on the Venus Magellan probe uh, that went to Venus and and so forth. So, uh, you know, it's just really fascinating that, you know, you're literally a, a NASA scientist. And uh, if you don't mind, and one of the things I'd, before we get into the C60, everybody, uh, you know, Bob, I, I was just wondering if maybe we could just chat for a little bit <laughs> uh, about the space shuttle Columbia. You know, it stands out as, you know, one of the tragedies of our history in, in the space program next to the Challenger. If you folks remember, Challenger uh, was destroyed on liftoff, but Columbia was destroyed on reentry, and and being one of the NASA engineers that worked on those ceramic tiles that were you know meant to prevent the heat from building up, I was wondering you know could would you mind just like you know what happened? I mean if, from your perspective and you know like what happened to the Columbia um, when it when it tried to you know when it went to reenter the Earth's atmosphere and then it burned up? It's well, yeah, that's a very sad story. What happened there is. Um... On, on takeoff, uh, you know, a piece of ice or debris uh, fell and broke some of the tiles off, and there were about five tiles missing. And, uh, you know, the thermal protection tiles, um, um, gosh, I have one here down in my, in my other office here. I could grab one if you wanted to but um, and show you what it looks like. Um, but the tiles themselves, they're, 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 they're ceramic. They're, they're made out of, uh, it's like cotton candy, except they solidify it by heating it up very hot temperatures and, and it fuses all the, uh, the fibers together. It's, it's kind of like fiberglass, a bunch of fiberglass mat all fused together. So they're fa fa fairly porous. And um, I mean, you can, they're like a, almost like a filter. You can, you can actually pull air through it. And um, so they're very brittle. So when that ice chunk of ice uh, hit the tiles, it broke uh, like five of them. And so they went up and they continued their mission. They they didn't have any any um, you know methodology. They said, ah, yeah, you we'll we'll try to get you back safely. But you know, a lot of us that worked on a project knew in our hearts that it, it you know they weren't coming back because you know you can survive one or two tiles missing, and then that the heat wouldn't penetrate. They're they're only about six inches by six inches these tiles, but when you got like five of them missing, you got a you know much bigger area. And so that heat of, of, of uh, re-entry re uh, come, you know, they're traveling at Mach 13 and temperatures of 2300 Fahrenheit on the outside of that and, uh, uh, you know, of, this, of the shuttle tiles. That's what they have to withstand for a period of 15 minutes. So when they came back and re-entered, um, 
you know, they, it heated up, you know, to the point where it caused catastrophic failure. And they had a, they had a basically a burn through or a hole in their, uh, their craft. And it just, that's, it disintegrated. So, yeah. oh, wow. That's, yeah, it's yeah. a tragedy. But yeah, that's really interesting because I remember back then that, you know, there was that discussion, but it seemed like, so it wasn't that the, the tiles that Lockheed had developed for this to shuttle the, the tiles themselves worked right it was just that oh yeah they just yeah, had the an tiles. accident where they'd lost tiles correct oh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah that's I think the laboratory that i was working on uh late later at the time they they made this um they called it tile repair kit and it was like a we call it a slaw because it was like a mixture of like cork and fibers and silicone and You'd go and pack it in one of these places that one of the tiles came out like a putty, but they didn't have that. That that program was canceled because they said, "Oh, we have really good results with the with, with the tiles themselves," and they didn't want to carry a repair kit uh, up on the tile. They could have went out there and you know did a spacewalk and packed it in there, and uh, it would have you know plugged that hole, so to speak, and so they could come in on one one reentry. But they never they never you know had that on board on 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 the, on the Columbia. Oh yeah, that get, yeah, that reminds me that apparently, uh, from what I recall, just from you saying that, that that repair kit was mandatory on all future shuttle flights, right? After the after the you no, know, they started the program back up. Uh, you know, started working on yeah, it was all, everything was grounded, redeveloping years. that program, and then I then I and that's about nineteen. That's when I quit the aerospace business, and uh -huh. uh, so I I don't I don't know if they continued with it or not, and that's when I went into health and human performance. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of vaguely remember that uh, that they came up with some kind of repair kit. Everything was grounded. The entire fleet was grounded, right, for a long time. But then they made it mandatory that they had to have the ability to fix stuff, which is bizarre that NASA wouldn't have had the ability to fix stuff because they have like 500 backups for everything. But it, I digress. But thank you for sharing that with me. It's just, it's just fascinating. Honestly, it's really fascinating to be able to speak to an actual scientist that worked for NASA who you know contributed to the uh, the space program is really just you know very humbling. <laughs> uh, no, okay, it, so it was it was a fun project and it was cost plus, so we had money to do testing and everything we wanted to do. Yeah, um, yeah those tiles. Just for a, a note of fact, um, you know the production after the Columbia was built, the production cost for the tiles were six hundred dollars a piece. But during but to make them for the first craft, it was they were six thousand dollars a piece. Whoa, okay, man. and there were thirty-two thousand tiles on that on that on 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 the, on the, on the shuttle. Each shuttle had thirty-two thousand tiles. So you can do the math. It was quite expensive, uh, um, but um, yeah, the, and they the, each tile was handcrafted. Basically, it was machined to fit a certain pattern, and they were bonded onto the bottom of the aluminum structure of the of the of the, the space shuttle. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, everything's expensive with NASA. Uh, my oh, father yeah. actually worked for Boeing, and once I had him explain to me why, uh, you know, why a toilet costs ninety thousand dollars, and it was interesting why that happens. That there's actually a reason why. Uh, okay, okay, but we digress. Oh. Hey, let's before we jump into the the carbon sixty chat, uh, let me get into uh, just a disclaimer. Uh, uh, the information in this video is provided for informational purposes only, and is not to be considered medical advice or instructions. Statements made have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Gretzka's Carbon 60 products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Consult your physician or healthcare provider for medical advice. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So, Bob, now you're uh, in 1990, you found you founded your own engineering firm. But then from what I can tell, I guess, you know, you, you did, let me just get this right. You uh, decided to get out of that and get into health, uh, you know, carbon for health. Uh, and then I noticed that the website for, that you have that you use now kind of popped up around 2015 uh, as Greska's Carbon 60. Is that was would that be around about the right time frame? Yeah, yeah that, that's about right. We put up a website uh, on January 2nd of uh, 2015. Yes, okay. exactly. Yeah, I found yeah, I found it in the archive. Uh, I noticed yeah. that you started out with uh, on sports and helping uh, athletes uh, with muscle performance uh, back then. That was your that was the the, the opening. The opening, uh, you know, uh, pitch for uh, for the product because you know that's literally three years after the Fossi Musa study uh, when C60 came on on the horizon for health supplements. So there, so that was born back then, uh, and since 2015, so you're going on almost uh, uh, coming up uh, on 10 years now. 
Well, no, no, actually, actually, I started working on carbon 16. Oh, we need really? some for a different project. I started in, 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 in 2012. Oh, okay. Um, so I actually developed the process to produce the, the carbon 60 that we use in 2012. And it took a, you know, it, it took a while and, you know, a, <laughs> the interesting story is what, you know, when I started making this, uh, carbon 60 powder, um, it's very small. It's very hard to contain. So it ended up filling a cloud in my whole laboratory. But I was in there for, oh gosh, a lot, long time, six or eight hours, breathing it in through my lungs. And that was in 2012. And um, and excuse me, but it, I, I breathed in so much of it, my stools were were black. And I, I said, oh my gosh, you know, this was the very beginning when I first started making the carbon 60 or, or converting it as a conversion process. And um I thought I might have toxified myself. And that was 2012. And I said, oh my gosh, I, I went home. I opened the door, cracked some light in. And you could see the whole room was full of this black mist or, or dust. And um, so I said, oh, geez, I thought I maybe toxified myself or something like that. So I went home that evening and I got on a computer and started researching carbon 60. And I studied everything I, I read, stayed on the, on the computer for about 18 months. And I, I read everything out there that was talked about carbon 60 or as much as I could. In the meantime, I go back to the laboratory and and, and work on the, uh, you know, making some more carbon 60. The more I did, the more I got interested. And then then we started going door to door, uh, like about uh, 2013, the end of 2013. And um, we had a, I, I printed my own little labels on a bottle and stuck them on there on my, my printing machine. We got to have these craft paper looking labels, two by twos. And I, I went to uh, you know, various chiropractors or naturopaths or different doctors just, you know, kind of say, hey, try this out. You know, because I tried it out on myself and I had no negative effects when I took that massive amount of carbon-60 into my body. There was no downside. The only downside was black stools. But I felt the cleansing. But that's not a scientific fact. But I felt like I was cleansed. Mm -hmm. And so I knew there was no negatives or downsides or toxicity to product. And that at the same time, that 2012, that's when the, uh, you know, people started looking at, that's when a baddie study came out and said it doubled the lifespan. And there, and there were two companies out there selling it. There was Tom Martin with Carbon 60 Olive Oil out of Chico, California, and Sarah Vodder with Vada Wellness out of uh, Czechoslovakia. There were two companies selling Carbon 60 at the time. And so I said, wow, geez, they got, and they're using solvent extracted Carbon 60. And I said, I, I don't use any solvents in my process anywhere. So there's not a trace amount or nothing, or we don't have to vacuum dry it off or nothing because there's none in there. And, and, and the particles are very, very small. That's that's the most important factor. But anyways, they started, so I started to say, well, I'm going to go door to door. And I started trying it on friends and family with positive, really good results. And then went into, uh, like I said, into you know doctor's offices and chiropractors and natural paths, and they started selling it. And um, yeah, that's when the, then the business took off when Cliff High spoke about it in uh, 2017, August 26, 2017. Yeah, that's when it exploded for sure. <laughs> so you know, so I got to ask you though, Bob. I mean, so so you were tinkering around uh, with producing your own carbon 60 before the body study came out. So what what interested you in making the change from uh, carbon scientists for the aerospace industry to you know car, you know starting to tinker around with carbon for for health and wellness. I mean, what, what was the inspiration for that, for that concept? Well, I, in the aerospace business, it's a, you work for the defense industry most of the time. And it's really not defense. It's really offense. They call it defense industry, but you're making bombs or devices or lasers for, you know, for actually offensive use. You know, the defense industry is really offense industry. And I got tired of, you know, making things of mass destruction and, and hurting that would hurt people eventually. Um, that would kill them. And um, so I decided to quit. And my parents, you know, they, they, they threw their hands up in the air and said, what are you doing? You got a great job and blah, blah, blah. Why are you quitting? And I said, well, you know, these are my reasons. I wanted to help. I want to help humanity instead of, you know, destroy it. And so that's when I started in, uh, in 1990. I, I quit the aerospace business and started, uh, and, I, and I've done other other products too that are health and human performance. Two of them that everybody would know about is we had a, a famous cyclist in a Tour de France that was winning. And uh, he, he we didn't see his particular name, so I don't want to mention his name, but we didn't see his name on the um, purchase order. 
but we did send one to Austin, Texas, and his name was mentioned quite frequently. And so we knew who he was, and he started winning the Tour de France, you know, and and, and that was with one of the altitude chambers that I was building. I just I developed an altitude simulation. So when you simulate higher altitudes, your body acclimates to that, developing more red blood cells. And so you get about 20% more red blood cells when you acclimate to about 15,000 feet. So you could go into this low barometric pressure chamber, a vacuum chamber, you get inside of it, and it would actually uh, pull the air uh, out, out of you. Uh, I don't have a picture of one here, but I did, I have a website, helpabaric.com. And um, and so a lot of athletes started using that. And sim similarly, I during, during the early 1990s, I worked on the, the, the modern day shoe spring. Yeah, you know, you, you, people knocked it off like the Air Nike, the Z coil, those springs that are in the heels of running shoes. See, I made them out of carbon fiber, which are very lightweight, but they were very expensive. And so, you know, Adidas, A6, Reebok, and Nike, they were not interested because it was just too expensive to put into their product line for their, you know, 20%, I mean, 20 times markup that they would sell their shoes for. So they knocked it off and put some springs and, you know, air, air and stuff like that into it. So so I, I played a part in that. So I worked in, you know, I did some, I worked a little bit for for Natick Labs, which is the, the U.S. Army um R and D center where we made some like exoskeletons so so people could lift more weights and so forth like that like you know put some springs on the outside of their legs so they could you know lift up and pick some more weights and you know we played around with different stuff with with, with working for Natick Labs too also with my company but oh, then wow. I then I then I got into the car in sixty yeah no, that's fascinating so I guess the, the I think the key thing for um, for folks that are not uh, deep into you know carbon sixty synthesis you know synthesizing carbon sixty or or um, as I guess you put it a different way, but uh, you know the typical way that everyone does it, right, is they take a source material of carbon and they just use an arc reactor and blast it into fullerene soot, and then and then they uh, then they use chemicals to to extract the C60 from the soot. But you, because you started off in a completely different direction on your own, um, I know that it's proprietary, so we won't get into the how you do it. But I guess the the thing about um, the you know the Greskus Carbon Sixty is it's very different uh, than all of the other commercial products out there. I just want to stipulate that for those of you who don't know. And so Bob and I are going to get into what makes it different, um, and and that is the main difference is that it doesn't go through the typical process of you know arc reactor, solar fullerene suit, uh, using a socklek extractor, and then using chemical. Uh, you know I think it's called color uh, or chromatography, right? Uh, to mm -hmm. extract using, you know, using solvents like benzene and toluene and so forth. So it doesn't do any of that stuff. So, you know, Bob, you literally just found a way because of your background uh, taking uh, a carbon source, right? And then extracting C60 or, yeah, I guess extracting because it's in there uh, and then taking that out of that uh, to produce your product. So uh, very impressive, very impressive that you have a way well, to yeah. do it. And, and so know, it's more of a what yeah. we use is more of a you know they, they have the carbon arc solvent extraction process and that's why everybody makes it commercially and everybody yeah. else out there except for me we did we do a conversion process so we take something with carbon we strip all every strip everything off of it everything does come off so we're left with carbon and then we reformulate or reposition it into a spherical shape and um uh through some yeah the magic <laughs> yeah <no problem. laughs> we, we, we 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 focus these down or, or start them out as a sphere on a macro scale and and sort of push that push them down this um like this magnetic funnel or something that you might call it like that is magnet mag magnetism involved and at the focal point we push out you know billions of uh carbon 60 molecules a second and um, yeah, but there's no solvents involved and it, it, it's right from the get go. They're independent, they're small, they're not clustered together. And yeah, that's what sets us apart is the bioavailability of our carbon 60 in our products. Yeah, no, it's, that's amazing. Uh, so, you know, let's talk about your products. So, so last time you and I chatted was years ago, but it was like your flagship product was this very first one called your Greskus Carbon 60. Um, and that's where you uh, have the your C60 in uh, organic sunflower oil, right? Is that correct? That is and correct. Then, so could you talk to you like, okay, so that's your flagship product, and that's the product that uh, you know, is, you know, you'll mostly find if you go anywhere now. Uh, Carbon 60 is available, and you'll find it in all sorts of different oils. Um, but it's a completely different chemical process that is, you know, that those other products are made. 
And so we'll, like, I'd like to talk a little bit more about, you know, like this specific product in, in organic sunflower oil. But before we get into that, which is the basis of the discussion here is, is you, I noticed you've come up with new products in the last few years. And I was wondering if yeah. maybe you could kind of just explain like, you know, what are these new products and, and what are you finding, uh, you know, hearing from customers that are trying them? Well, we, we use uh, on the sunflower oil, we use a, a very low linoleic acid, omega sixes. Most mm -hmm. sunflower oil has, you know, high omega sixes. But so, but our, our source of during the Ukraine war started up, mm -hmm. um, and Ukraine uh, produces 78% of the sunflower crop for the world. Oh. And so, so we said, oh gosh, you know, we can't get it from our traditional su supplier that produces the high quality, the low linoleic acid sunflower oil. So we, we we got it from another source, which was which was compatible, but it, it just had a heavier taste to it. It was a little oilier texture, and you could taste the sunflower seeds more. And so we said, well, okay, let's revisit the the, the water product, our topical mist. That's carbon sixteen water. Mm -hmm. And we we started that out. Oh gosh, probably six years ago. We we did some testing of putting carbon sixty in water, and it, it's very difficult. It's like mixing oil and water together. One's polar, one's nonpolar. They don't mix together. So you got to be you got to. So I I developed a special process to kind of I'm a process engineer. I developed a special process. I have tricks up my sleeve of putting it together, and it took a while. You know, from six years ago, we, we did it and we mixed it up and put it in water, and then it would settle out or it would start clinging to the sides or start clustering. It took about three days, but we did get some testing done. We'd mix it up. We'd run it over to Denver University. They were testing it on live rat brain and um, they put live rat brain, they slice it, they put it in a Petri dish. Sorry about all this details, gory details, but they put it in a Petri dish and they put this water-based liquid in there that has sugar and whatever else it has in there to keep the, the, the rat brain alive. And then they would take it and they would add hydrogen peroxide. That's a standard test. They add hydrogen peroxide and they would see uh, like 80% cell death in 24 hours on their brain tissue. And they used my, we made it up real quick, ran it over there within a couple hours. They put it in there and tested it. And they would, and with the carbon 60 added to that uh, Petri dish, they, it, it cut the, the cell death in half, so it protected. It was only 40% cell death in 24 hours with the carbon-60 water-based product in there. But we could never get it to stay in to solution or, or say suspended or whatever you want to call it. It's yeah. a sus suspension. So we had a lot of difficulty with that. But until, uh, you know, we had the potential, uh, you know, sunflower oil disappear. And I said, well, uh, gee, if we don't have any sunflower oil, uh, we think it's the best oil to put it in because it has a very long shelf life. So we started using the do, do, putting it into the topical mist, the water product, and I developed a process to keep it in suspension. And so that's the topical mist. It's a spray on. It's much more user friendly. You can spray it on your skin, and it dries within a few minutes, and it penetrates within a few minutes too. So you get pretty quick, pretty quick, two two to three minute results if you have any pain. That's why we put on there, mist away your pain. It works very good with that. Yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you about this because I, I just did a video on hydroxylated C60, you know, water soluble. But yeah, you know, all the research that I found was that you know, it's C60 is hydrophobic, and you know, it's just it's just going to settle out and just go to the bottom if you just put it with water. So is that just water in there and C60? Yeah, and you found a way to get it to bond. Yeah, we found a way to get it to bond. There's there's a a way to do it. It's called it's. It, there's a there's a London they call it a London dispersion force that you can actually it, it, it forms a bridge between the the water molecule and the uh, carbon sixty. Um, you know there's there's hydroxylated uh, carbon sixty also too where they put, actually add an OH onto it. And right. these are these are they, they, these forces these these the London dispersion forces. Uh, they're atomic forces. They're very weak. So you can, if you, and, and so it'll stay in the water. It, it's a balancing act. So it'll, it'll stay in the water and stay suspended. And we have a very good suspension with our product. It's extremely well. I mean, even with the, in, in the oil, uh, you know, it's a colloidal suspension. You know, it will fall out after a couple of years. I mean, it, it's just slow process because the water has viscosity and it drops to the bottom. And, you know, so it falls out. We put it into a suspension. It's not a dissolved solution. You cannot dissolve carbon-60 in water, um, but you can dissolve carbon-60 in an oil, an lipid. So mm -hmm. so they're, they're a little bit different. Okay. 
So yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. Okay. So, but then what about the, you know, because you're using it as a topical, but you know, the, uh, you know, all of the studies I've seen about, uh, C60 is very sensitive to UV turns into a pro-oxidant. So are there any cautions about using your product topically? Like, you know, maybe you don't go out in the sun or, or have you found a way to, uh, you know, alleviate that aspect? Well, you're right. Carbon 60 olive oil or these other oils are, it's the oil that's light sensitive. Ah, it's not the carbon. Yeah. Carbon's, you can put, put in, carbon's indestructible. It's, it, even it withstands temperatures up to 3,200 degrees Fahrenheit. It, it's very stable. It's, it's, it's the most stable element on a periodic chart. And so it doesn't degrade with UV like people say they do. It's when they, see, they don't really differentiate. When they say carbon 60, we did a study on it. You know, you don't know whether they're talking about carbon 60 in olive oil or carbon 60, the powder. They don't uh, okay. really differentiate what, what they're talking about. But mm -hmm. the carbon 60 is very stable. It does not degrade. I've never seen it degrade. Never had a problem with it degrading. But the the oils do. Yeah, they, they, they do get rancid. Uh, even even the sunflower oil will get rancid. You know, we have it tested for two years and 10 months. So we, we've had that certified third party tested outside uh, to an actual longevity, uh, you know, aging, aging process with the rancidity of the sunflower oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, OK. That's, OK. So, yeah. OK. So, you know, for uh, for the stuff, you know, I've been I've been answering questions about C60 for quite a few years and. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so what you're, I, you know, I've actually seen, I've done my own little tests and um, I haven't ever had a uh, batch go rancid. I think it just, the C60 mops up all the, you know, all the radical oxygen species and prevents rancidity, you know, but, but what about, okay, so if it does, if carbon, just pure carbon 60 is not sensitive to UV because it's just carbon right? But it is sensitive to oxidation, right? Because I've had samples of C60 literally turn brown. Uh, you know, because it just got oxidized and I had just ended up throwing it away. But is that, is, is that a, other, another concern? I mean, that's not a concern, right? That you're putting uh, C60 topically and that it could oxidize because you're going to absorb it faster than you could, than it would oxidize. Is that, is that another well, you're way? You're talking, to... you had some C60 in olive oil that went brown is what you're saying. No, I, well, it, it's a couple of different versions, right? Like there was this uh, one vendor out there that was selling uh pulverized C60 and they had it in uh uh, pure alcohol, like 100% alcohol, that was the carrier, all right? right? Mm -hmm. So they would just float around in there. Um, and then once the alcohol just, you know, uh, evaporated in the container, once you opened the container, man, it was really fast. Uh, the alcohol would, and then then the C60 was black, and then it would eventually just turn brown. Hmm. And then, yeah, uh, yeah that, that then, had to be the carrier agent. I would, ne I've never had oh, my okay. carbon 60. Our, our carbon 60 is black, black, black. It's it's extremely black. Um, we got we done a video on it. I mean, you, you, okay. we put it into a little tray or something like that. You can't even tell where, how much is in there because it's so black. You mm -hmm. know, it, it absorbs all the light. Okay, so so I guess the, so that's the question. Then I guess pure carbon sixty is not sensitive to UV or oxidation. It's just carbon. I've never seen it, and okay. I've never heard, you know I, I've okay. heard about a lot of people talk, talk about it, but I think they're really referring to the oil to the oils, oils yeah. Pants. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so you've got this tropical mist product, the topical one. It's uh, great for pain, and, and it's, it's basically C60 in water. So it's not it's not a water soluble C60. It's actual C60, right? In water, correct? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's okay. a it's called a colloidal suspension. Okay. Yeah. It, it is water and carbon 60. Those are the two main ingredients. We do put a little bit of glycerin in there, um, just a, a very small amount, like you know, like a, a, a CC per gallon. And that's just to give it a little tactile, tactile feel. So you can feel it on your skin. It gives it a little bit, it gives it a nice feel. Okay. And so, so we put that in there after we get it mixed, after the fact, it's not, it doesn't aid in putting it into a suspension. I know that glycerin is bipolar. So, but, but that's not the reason why we put it in there. It has nothing to do with putting it, keeping it in suspension. That's not what we use it for and that we don't need it. Uh, we just put it in there just as a little bit of a tactile feel. So okay. there's a tiny, tiny amount. Okay. And so, so then the other two new products that you've launched in the last couple of years, there's, you've, you've, you actually, uh, you know, joined the program with so many other companies, but you know, now you're selling a C60 for pets, but is that actually a different formula than the 
It's the C60 for humans, your flagship product. I mean, no, is it's, it, a, it's, it's, it's identical. What's inside it's the a, bottle okay. is identical. It's okay. just that we have Different people bottle. with the with the 45 day supply with the dropper. They'd see their dog would see the bottle. The dot, you know, pets have a natural. They they jumped up on the owner, and he, you know, two hands, you spill the bottle. And so we put it in a <laughs> pump squirt bottle. It comes out as a stream and we regulate it. One squirt for a cat, five squirts for a large dog. Okay. That's actually uh, pretty smart because I give my dogs uh, C60, but I use a dropper. And the only way to get them to take it is I got to put the dropper in their mouth. And then I got to go and disinfect the dropper every single time. <laughs> so yeah, the spray is that's pretty smart. Uh, yeah. And then now the face serum, is that um, what are, what, what's the, so it's your C60, but what's the carrier? What's like, is what are you using as as a as a liquid? Well, well, we had people using the the regular forty five day topically. We have a roll on right. too, with the same product in the bottle. Okay, okay it's the same thing. But we had a roll on, and they were putting that on their you know they were using the forty five on topically. And we said, "Geez, it penetrates my my knee pain. It, it floods it floods your knee locally by putting it on topically." The carbon 60 molecules go in and flood that particular part of your body, whether it's over an organ or on your face skin or on age spots or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it really worked really, really well. But um, I had I had a good friend of mine and, and, and she was looking at she said, I love your product, but I don't like the oil of the sunflower oil staying on my face. You know, I, it's, it's kind of oily, you know. It, so she looked at different uh, carrier oils. And we found out that we, we found a really high quality cosmetic oil. It's called squalane oil. Mm -hmm. It's not squalene, which is derived from shark liver and olive oil. This is squalane, which is derived from sugar cane. So there's no sh shark livers, you know, squished out and get the squalene. And and, and basically, the squalene actually uh, is very similar to the collagen you have in your skin. And it actually, you know, the, the, the face serum product will actually promote collagen production in your skin. The carbon 60 will actually neutralize the free radical damage on your skin, which causes it to dry out and look old and wrinkle, is um, uh, from the carbon 60, from the UV, from the sunlight. You get the ultraviolet light that knocks electrons off, and the carbon 60 obviously puts them back on. So we've had very good luck with um, you know, people using that. It feels wonderful. I mean, we put it in a pink bottle because it's mostly... You know, women are, are using the product uh, quite a bit. Oh, that's great. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Um, thanks for explaining that. I was really kind of curious about the new products out there uh, that you've got going. So now I was reading the website and listening to prior interviews. And I think one of the things that stands out uh, about, you know, uh, your carbon 60 uh, is the particulate size. And that seems to be something you talk a lot about. And I kind of wanted to just, you know, I, I know you've mentioned this so many times in other interviews, but I, I kind of want to explore that a little bit and just kind of understand, because when I was looking at your site, you've, you've actually done the research where you, this is right off of the mm -hmm. Bob's website. Uh, it's a, quite a lot of data, but right here, um, there was Bob had done a study and I was wondering if you could just talk to this where you looked yeah. at yours, you know, your C60 went, I guess, to other C60 powder, right? C yeah, these other are all C60 powder. powders. Yeah. And then you did a comparison because I actually did a video way back uh, years ago where I did, I did kind of the same thing. I, I looked at uh, four other uh, C60 powders and I used a little microscope and all that. So you did yours, but you did uh, with an electron microscope, which is awesome. Uh, and you've compared yourself to four other or five other products out there. Can you talk about what your findings were when you took a look at the other C60 powders on the market compared to yours? And, and what did you find? Well, we looked at our powder underneath. the. It's a transmission electron microscope that was done. Third party testing uh, was done at the University of Colorado. Um uh, well, excuse me, School of Mines. I'm I'm sorry. It was a School of Mines. There, there are minerals type Colorado based uh, materials engineering college. And so the first column on the far left, that that's our product. And then we have vendor number two, three, four, five, and six. Those are other of the most leading producers of the carbon sixty at the time. Uh, this was done. Oh gosh, 2018, 2000, yeah, 2018. And um, we so we we took samples of it, put them in a transmission electron microscope, and it took pictures of them at different magnifications. Now the top row is a very coarse magnification; it's only 155. You know, you're not going to see anything too too much with that. 
Uh, then, then as we go down the page, we increase the magnification. And you, you can see when you get down a little bit further, let's say, let's look at the 2850 magnification. Yeah, you can see like we ours is very, very fine looking dust. And these other particles are very large, you know. Um, and, and if you continue down to the bottom of the page, you can see that uh, the one that we're looking at is on the right there. Yeah, you see that little utter looking kind of thing sticking down there. You can see one of those little points is ours is much smaller than that. Now, if you back up to it, so so this is the highest magnification at the bottom. It gets really, really high. Now, we did find on, so you can see our carbon 60 on the far lower left there. Um, yeah, they're, they're spherical. They're 20 nanometers in average size. Now, we did find one of something that looked very, very similar in vendor number two, but we searched over the entire sample and we only found one independent molecule. Now, that's the one that really does a trick because it has a bioavailability. And uh, but but most of the other ones, as you scroll back up again, you can see they're all clustered together. And that's the difference between the solvent process, the solvent extraction process will cause as you dry the uh, solvent off of the carbon 60 powder, uh, once you, you know, you increase its purity, which purity and we'll talk about that. It's only purity is really the ratio of carbon 60 to carbon 70. It's not really how clean it is. You can have 99 pennies and a dime and a bucket of mud and add another half a bucket of mud. You still have 99 pennies and one dime. And that's what they call purity. It's only the ratio of the carbon 60 to carbon 70. Whoever picked that term, it was not a materials engineer. It should be ratio. But you can see when you dry the solvents off, and everybody's seen fine, silty mud. When mud dries, it dries up and pulls together, gets like a peanut butter consistency, kind of kind of semi-dry, and then it dries some more and it cracks. And, and, and what happens is that's what they have here, because all the, all the moisture or solvent in this case evaporates out between the particles and it pulls all the particles together. And the carbon-60 at the high temperatures of, of drying process of 460 degrees Fahrenheit and the vacuum they put it under causes all the particles to pull together and mud crack, just like mud does. And so they're left with these large chunks. And that's why everybody mixes it for two weeks. That's why they mortise and pestle grind it, trying to bake those chunks down. You can buy carbon-60 powder, and many of you have, from these vendors, and you can actually see the little tiny particles all clustered together with the naked eye. I mean, they're huge. And yeah. that, that's why they mix it for two weeks to try to break these down. And they, they do. Some of them do break down to some extent, but they're still not. That's why they always filter it with that uh, 0.2 micron or uh, 200 and whatever you, that was 200 my, two, yeah, 200 nanometer size uh, filter because they, they try to filter out the large chunks that don't break apart. So our process that we produce that we produce we produce uh, all of them they're all nice spherical round all uniformly somewhat uniformly shaped very close to 20 nanometers so the bioavailability where these other clusters are they're like 1200 nanometers at best. So for every one of their clusters in the same volume, we have 200,000 particles that are independent, C60 molecules that are independent. So they're much more bioavailable. Okay. So let me see if I understand this, because um, first of all, when I did, you know, when I did the research on, 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 on processing and solvents, and I understand that, you know, a, a you know, it's a crystalline a carbon allotrope. Um, but the reason that it's clustered or clumps together is because of the solvents, right? Causes the causes the crystallization of the C60 and it forms right. these grains. Um, and as, as opposed to individual molecules and these grains, I, I believe like one, one manufacturer sells a, a, a pulverized version. And I think they quote that they've got their particulate size down to 300 nanometers. Uh, but it's still huge, right? That's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I guess from a bioavailability standpoint, I guess that's what I, you know, I, I, as I've been studying this, like, from a bioavailability standpoint, um, I've read one toxicology study where they went and they dissected, you know, the animals after they were exposed to C60, and they were finding particulates lodged in various organs, anywhere from 50 nanometers to 150 to 300 nanometers, right? Uh, after after they were exposed to C60, and 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 what I, and can is it safe to deduce or, or is it reasonable to deduce that 
if the if the clinicians were finding these particles lodged in the organs of these of these rats that they a they, they weren't digested they weren't dissolved they weren't absorbed and they weren't bioavailable and, and in other words because i could not find any studies out there that have done a study about particulate size as opposed you know as in relation to bioavailability however so my question is is you know if i deduce backwards from this st other study i just mentioned then is it safe to 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 just you know is it a reasonable assumption that says hey if they're finding these large particulates after you know after they've been exposed that large particulates are not bio uh, bioavailable well yeah that's a safe assumption right because they're yeah, finding that's a very safe assumption yeah, well okay. they are to some extent now if you look yeah. at the antioxidants you find in foods like red wine and, and berries and so forth like that, the, the particle size is about the same particle size as Vendor 2 through 6. Okay, they're, they're 1,200 nanometers across and they're very big. So what they have, and some of them, when they do mix it, they do break down to some extent, but not all of them. You know, some of them break down, and I'm, I'm sure they don't all, all get down to like a 20 nanometer size, like that one particle, but I'm sure they get a few of them, and that, those are the most beneficial. Um, but so basically, they have a, 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 a something that's comparable to a good antioxidant like red wine and berries. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ate red wine and berries you'd probably get the similar, which no every day, which very few people do, you'd probably get the similar effect of taking a daily serving of these other vendors. So they're, they're probably pretty equivalent. Okay. Because, you know, I'm looking at this this one uh, picture right here. It's at 120,000 magnification, and you can see the spheres, right? The, which yeah. what carbon-60 is supposed to look like. That's the molecule. But, uh, but these are you saying that these spheres right here, are clusters of carbon 60 molecules up to 20 uh you know like 20 nanometers uh, well in... yes and no no it's still not to, in... the, to the, the highest magnification look way down on the left there uh -huh. um you will see they they, they, they what we b believe we produce and we we don't know for sure because it, it's hard to tell well that boy that's kind of we're see. making what's called a nano onion Okay. Ah, okay. Which is basically a carbon 60 molecule with a snowball or the jelly, jelly roll of, of uh, pentagons and hexagons that go up to uh, uh, 20 nanometers. So the actual carbon 60 molecule truly is only one nanometer. Okay. It's, you know, yeah. plus or minus a little bit. There's different, there's arguments on that, but call it one nanometer. And so what we're making is 20 nanometers. So yeah, we, we believe what we have is a jelly roll. So we don't know if it's truly the carbon 60 molecule giving up the uh, the, the, the electron, which we, we have in our product because we had it tested with the um, um, mass spec time of flight and show it does show carbon 60. But it also, you know, these pentagons and hexagons of carbon are very, very useful for your body. That's why you kind of eat food for the, you know, it helps with the, the DNA and the RNA. Um, many nucleotides use these pentagons and hexagons of carbon rings uh, to, uh, you know, pr pr produce these things in your body that your body's very efficient with. So carbon-60 in, in this, this very small form, it, you know, e even if you had carbon, it was probably activated charcoal that was very bioavailable, you, you would see some positive results with it you know okay. but the carbon 60 molecule being that it's produced so small that ours is so small it makes it very very bioavailable okay so for all these years now i'm thinking <laughs> you know i've been making my own c60 i've also tried multiple different commercial products but mm -hmm. basically all everything you know, everyone else is um large particulate size even if you pulverize it you're never going to get mm -hmm. below 300 mostly um right that's mortar pestle pulverization but but you know so but even then though you've got these large particulates and they still perform as c60 would right because it's clear that they're working uh i'm a living rat a living test mm -hmm. rat <laughs> that can prove that it's working uh so even at even at that large size you know you're getting the benefits of c60 however it's not as bioavailable as individual molecules because all this time you know before i did some research on 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 what you have done here on, on your studies uh, i was always under the impression that i had individual molecules of c60 yeah. floating around inside of liposomes right uh, that would then get pulled into my cells and then it would do its thing but i didn't realize that it was literally 
clusters of C60 molecules that were being floating around my body doing what C60 does. And then the other products that are not yours are larger, you know, per particulates. But I guess once it gets up to, you know, from that one study I just mentioned, when it gets up to 50 or 150, 300, uh, you know, it's not going to be, uh, you know, absorbed by the body. But okay. That, that's well, they, real they, fascinating. They will, to, they will to some extent, like a good okay. antioxidant, which you get in food. So yeah. they all, all these other products, you do have benefits with them. I'm okay. not going to say they, they, they do. They do. They right. report, that's why the carbon 60 industry is boom, taken off like crazy. Okay. Um, they, they do have benefits with them, but not, but they have, they all have trace solvents in them. Yeah. And they, they just don't have this, the, the particulate size okay. and they do get caught in your, your liver and your the nephrons of the kidneys and so forth like that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So my, my point was just to understand that study you did was, um, how yours compares to everyone else and that smaller presumably is way more bioavailable. Uh, okay. So that's that. And then the other idea here is the concept that, uh, all of the other, um, commercial products out there, you know, basically emulate the Fathi Musa study on the rats right back in 2012 that kicked off C60 as a supplement, but they all emulate that and they produce lipofullerenes by stirring, you know, in oil. Um, and, but yours is not stirred in oil like that, correct? No, we, we don't How store would, it for yeah. two weeks or anything like that. We, we put it in our sunflower oil and basically two minutes we, we stir it up, we mix it up because okay. all of our particles are already separated. Right. So we don't have to mix it for two weeks. We just mix it for two minutes and that help keeps our cost down also, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so there's a huge, okay. So, and, but, but here's the thing though. I mean, other commercial products out there that are calling their products lipofullerenes, um, not all of the C60 is converted to a lipofullerene. It's still C60 in suspension, even after you filter. If you filter, right? I mean, I just want to just get your take on this. But even if I followed the Fathi Musa formula, right, and I stirred for two weeks, and then I filtered with a 0.2 micron filter, I'm still getting C60 particulates under 0.2 in my, my, my final product. So I've got lipofullerenes and suspended c60 particulates in my final product even as in commercial or diy is that correct that is correct right and okay so large particles yeah 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 because um yeah I, I i know that yeah another uh individual i know did a study of commercial products and they ran them through a centrifuge and it just the centrifuge shows um that not all the other i mean all the other commercial products out there have suspended c60 so you know, my whole thing was up up until I did all of the study recently was like, I always suspected or I always thought that if I ingest a C60 uh, oil product, even my own, that I'm only benefiting from the lipofullerenes. But I guess from your research, because your product doesn't convert to lipofullerenes and your your customers and, and people using your product are also being able to uh, benefit from C60 is that C60 as a suspension also has... Um, major benefits and there, it's not just simply passed uh, through the digestive system is that correct well y y yes but just to uh, make one correction there um a, a lipo fullerene is a fullerene that's surrounded by oil that's basically all it is and in the way they um you know put things into um a, a lipid format is they take that uh, 0.2 micron filter and they will put it, they put it in like two syringes and they'll squish it, shoot it back and forth. And so until all the particles get coated or covered with oil, and that's that, that's a that's a liposome when it's covered with oil. Mm -hmm. And that's the process that's used quite frequently to make liposomes. It's just to push it back and forth through a tiny filter. And so all the particles separate and they all get surrounded by oil. So yeah, we have our our, our particles are obviously surrounded by oil too. So yes, we have a, a, a lipofullerene. Um, but I want to talk about this graph we have. I mean, it's showing what we have here in front of us, these picture of these test right. tubes. Yeah, starting on the far right and moving across the screen to the left as it gets darker and darker and darker. Um, you can see we put a very low concentration of carbon-60 in the first two uh, vials. You know, then, then we increased it gradually, uniformly up to the scale. And um, we, we call this the 21 bottles test. But we really should have 35 bottles on it, but our table wasn't big enough <laughs> to get the full concentration up to what we have in our bottle. 
Um, but you can see, as like most other products of carbon sixty, you can see visually right through the uh, right through the glass. It looks like on, a, on the first two, they they look like they're basically all uh, sunflower oil in this case. Mm -hmm. And so, so as we increase the darkness, it gets darker and darker and darker and darker. And that's basically uh, what that um, little setup shows. And we have a video on our website that shows that also. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So I guess the point here is all all C60 products out there in the market, the C60 in oil and, and yours as well, is it's lipofullerene and it's also suspension and it's probably also a colloid, right? It's, it's actually, there's a little bit of all three uh, in all of these different products. And, and, and irregardless of how the C60 is provided in the three different manners, uh, it, it still has a, a beneficial effect. I think that's the the key point, correct? correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I would agree with that. Okay. I want to show right. you. I want to show you a, another little uh, test tube video here we have here. So uh -huh. th this is just to show you the size of our particle size, and we have another video out there that shows. We call it, you know, uh, we, we we study the size of the carbon sixty molecule or the volume. These are all, you know, the popular vendors out there that sell carbon sixty products. And, and this is a gram. This is a gram of a, some pr vendor, Carbon 60, that makes the powder. This is another another gram of another vendor. And this is a gram of another vendor. Now, this is a gram of our powder that fills the whole test tube. And this, because the particle size is so much smaller, it takes up more volume, you know? Um, yeah. So, and we got that zeroed in on a, we got a video on that showing uh, also. We, show, we, we never stopped the camera. We showed how we poured it out and weighed it and everything came out to the, the gram amount. Yeah. yeah. I saw that video. Really interesting. It's kind of like the yeah. concept of uh, powdered sugar versus granular sugar versus yes. you know, yeah, it just gets the mm -hmm. volume is huge. Okay. So there you, there you go uh, on trying to understand C60, everybody. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. The most important thing is the particle size. Yeah. You get the bioavailability. It gets to float around your body. Um, I always compare it to like snowballs and snowflakes. You can have 10 pounds of snowballs where each snowball will do one neutralized one free radical where, or you have 10 pounds of snowflakes where each snowflake will neutralize one free radical. And so that's basically the, the difference in the bioavailability process. Okay. All right. So now when we talk about C60, thank you for all that. That's really good to know. Very, very educational. Um, Let's talk about the commercial products out there, all the C60 powder manufacturers and the idea of the residual solvents. Cause that's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, it's a huge issue for a lot of folks who are, you know, very health conscious and they don't want to have, uh, you know, they, they don't want any negative things, uh, you know, and digesting and so forth or put on their skin. And, and something that you said in our pre-interview, which I didn't ever consider. Cause when I, when I looked at solvents, I found studies that simply said, um, that the solvents, uh, there are, they're always going to be residual solvents when C60 is, is extracted from fullerene soot using chemicals, right? Because uh, it gets trapped within the crystal clusters of the C60. So it's, it's actually trapped in there. So even though they do like an, you know, like a, like an ether wash, uh, they're still going to, you know, you're still going to have residual solvents no matter what. And that several producers out there, uh, multiple, uh, they just basically put it in a vacuum oven um, and bake it multiple times and declare it solvent free. Um, right. And so, but what I wanted, but you pointed out something to me, and if you could, ex you know, just expand on this, but it's not that to see the solvent molecules are, tr are you know, they you know, the studies show, yes, they're trapped in the crystals in between the C60 molecules, but you also mentioned, which I did not know, and I went and looked up and I found a study that basically supports what you mentioned to me was that the solvents don't just get trapped as solvent molecules, but they actually bond to the C60 molecules. So could you expand on that? Because that was news to me when we talked last week. Yeah, yeah. the, the carbon 60 uh, molecule and the solvent, the toluene is the most common one, will actually chemically bond to the carbon 60 molecule. And it, it, it swells the bond angles of the electrons, which pushes the lattice structure apart. And this is my fiber optics background. Uh, I know a little bit about light and how light reflects and what color it makes color. As, as you have the, 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 um, 
the lattice structure expanded and swelled, it, instead of absorbing all the light, like being black, um, it will reflect between the lattice structure, that wavelength of light, and reflect it back and show the color purple. And that's because it expands the carbon-60 molecules and their lattice structure, their crystalline structure. A, a crystal of carbon-60, is it, a crystalline structure is just an atomic arrangement of the molecules. Uh, they all line up in a, a particular pattern. That's 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 a crystalline lattice structure. So it's just an arrangement of the carbon atoms. Like you have diamonds, they're arranged in a triangular uh, um, format. They they form triangles, three three or four tri three one two three four triangles around a uh, with carbon molecules. You get the your graphene, which is a flat sheet. That's that's another atomic arrangement, another allotrope of carbon. So the carbon sixty molecule being spherical in shape. Uh, that's what happens when it bonds with the solvents. And it, and it reflects the color purple, that wavelength. And they say, well, yeah, ours is a certain color purple. And that means it's 99.99% pure, which means that pure, again, means that it's a ratio of carbon 60 to carbon 70. Carbon 70 is actually red when it's saturated with solvents. And so if you get a, a little bit of red and a little bit of blue from the actual carbon-60 molecule when the bond lines are expanded with the solvents um, or the bond angles, um, it would reflect the color purple. And that's what they call color purple. Now, now what we did test, they said, oh, you know, when we were accused of using <laughs> ink toner cartridges and stuff like that or things like that in our product, um, you know, we were we were baffled too because we put our product in, and they said, "Well, if you put carbon sixty into toluene, it turns purple." Well, we never, you know, we put our product. We so let's take some of our carbon sixty, put it into toluene. It didn't turn purple. We did hundreds of tests. We put a little bit of carbon sixty, different volumes, different amounts into toluene. I even set up a little rocker table that would rock it back and forth for a week to keep it keep it in motion. And uh, gosh, we could never get it to turn purple. And we go, why? Why? What happened? You know, we don't understand why ours doesn't turn purple. Well, see, theirs is pre-saturated because it's because it's it's produced with solvents. So there's already solvents in there, so it's already pre-saturated. We have we finally had one of our 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 our, our products turn purple, and we really realized that I left it in the, the my car, and we're in Colorado, the hot and cold of the day. Heats it up, cools it down. Heats it up, cools it down. In the three week, three weeks, that uh, temperature switch, uh, a change of hot and cold, actually saturated the carbon sixty molecules with the toluene. So it turned up purple is the first one over here, and and so we're so so once you're pre-saturated, it turns purple, and if you and it, once we saturated ours, it turned purple. So yeah, that's that was our proof in point. Okay, so so in the process of, of you know, let's just call it the traditional way of making C60 or synthesizing C60. Um, they first you use an arc reactor, you create soot, you take the soot, and then you use liquid chromatography to separate the fullerenes out, the different C60, C70, C84, all that. And in that process right they take they take the soot and they put it in toluene or benzene or whatever they're using it changes colors at that point so how, how does it pick up like i guess if you're putting soot into toluene how does it turn purple because it, it has is are you is it bonding to the toluene at the moment they add it like during the, the chromatography process I've I've never done the chromatography process. I've okay. never done it, but it it is a solvent based uh, separation process called high performance liquid chromatography, and that's when they they separate the carbon sixty molecules, um, and and they, they well they can tell you know what the ratio is uh, okay. by, by, by determining what color purple it is. Yeah, I don't know how quickly it turns. If it turns very quickly, I don't don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but so the idea though is that it's it's purple because the solvents are present. Correct. And there's many um, studies mm. showing that solvents make carbon sixty purple. And it, if yeah. you have something that's purple, that shows that means you have the presence of carbon sixty and toluene. And toluene, another name for toluene is methyl benzene. Just, just oh yeah, a different, that's different yeah. Name. yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So then. Okay. So. Your product is made without ever touching solvents. And then you've got this other um, 
form of C60 that's marketed uh, called sublimated C60, where they take the fullerene and instead of using chemicals, they just heat it up until it just evaporates. And then they collect, then they, they condense it back down and um, that's how they separate it out, right? But there's the issue there, right, with um, that process is that, you know, I look at it from a contaminant standpoint because it's the, the purity of the source, right, at that point when you're using sublimated C60. But yeah. So if, if regular C60 is treated with chemicals um, and no matter what you do, there's still going to be residual chemicals because we're all using it and we all see it because we put it in olive oil and it turns red. <laughs> you know, you get this red tinge when you hold it up to the light. And that if that tinge is coming from the solvents, um, then, then other people are going, no, 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 we use sublimated C60. Ours doesn't have any. So could you talk about that? Because you and I had an interesting talk about yeah, yeah, but even if you sublimate, it still it doesn't have solvents, residual solvents, but it has residual contaminants. So can can you talk about that? Well, on your on your website, you got this really cool graph uh, yeah. that you did a study on that. So let me just kind of show everybody. Yeah, yes, sublimated carbon sixty. You know, we have people say that yeah, sublimated carbon sixty. Well, it never comes in contact with solvents. Now that's true. Once you sublimate your carbon sixty and don't put it with solvents, you got you're saying a true statement. But the carbon 60, which is started with before you sublime it uh, or, or go through the sublimation process, is produced with solvents. So you start with it, but you know, they, they, there's, there's companies out there that do a play on words like our sublimated carbon 60 never touches solvents. True statement. But what they start with from the beginning be, before they sublimate it is produced with solvents. So that's how you so, so far increase the concentration or increase the purity. The so-called purity of carbon-60 is going through a sublimation process, which does not use solvents. That is true during the sublimation, but what you start with does. But going back to this graph that you have here on the, on, on, on the screen right now is when you burn, when you have carbon rods and they're held together, it's it, they're held together, it's amorphous carbon held together. It's held together mostly with, with, with silica. So there's silica, there's carbon, there's oxygen, there's potassium, there's sulfur, there's magnesium, there's all these other elements that are in those carbon rods. So when you burn them with an electric arc, oh yeah, they put out pretty colors. You know, like the red, the, the iron that's in there will put out a red color, the um, uh, sulfur will put out a yellow, the magnesium will put out, I don't know, I think it puts out a blue, uh, but different elements, that's why they make fire uh, uh, fireworks. They put out all these different colors. They use different metals or different 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 elements that turn different colors when they when they heat it up. So yeah, all these uh, uh, samples that we took, uh, you know, we have carbon and oxygen and that's it. We only have like a, our contaminant is a half a percent of oxygen. That is all that's in our, our carbon, 60 powder. Mm -hmm. And these other ones that were analyzed, um, they they have other ingredients or other other elements within them. Okay. So even sublimated is not, quote, pure carbon 60, right? That's the bottom line is because it has other, it has other contaminants, other uh, metals, other substances in the the source right so okay yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, when, and when they say 99 percent or 99.99 percent you know that's only the ratio of carbon 60 to carbon 70 it's not how pure it is purity is the yeah. wrong word. it should here be is ratio. how much of the sample is carbon 60 right uh no well that that's called that's ratio how much of the sample is c60 is the ratio purity is how how clean the carbon 60 is by itself I guess no, it's... well, well, that's what they'd like you to believe. But yeah. purity, the word they use it, the purity word should be substituted and say ratio. Okay. So purity, purity of carbon sixty doesn't mean how clean it is. It it can it can still have like you know ninety nine pennies and one dime and a bucket of mud, and you add okay. another half a bucket of mud, and they call that well, we still have ninety nine percent purity in our you know nickel our pennies and dimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is really eye opening. Yeah, because I was always yeah. thinking. I was always thinking sublimated was better, right? Because it didn't have solvents. But okay, so let me back back up a step here about the solvent issue because this has been argued, boy, it's for years now, right? Yeah, <laughs> On oh, the yeah. forums and the chat groups. <laughs> uh, you know, there's this big, there's, you know, you've you've got a fan base and they're like, you know, and you know, and, and then you know, there's the other people and but it, but and then of course all the people out there making C60, they 
So here, let me throw some arguments at you as a devil's advocate. Sure. I just would just like to get your take on it. And and people are saying, um, like, like even like even when I did my research on on solvents, and I went and looked up what the EPA and the FDA, um, you know, OSHA regulations on parts per million, just like you know the whole rat hair thing, and you know all the sure. food out there. There's you know the the government allows percentage of your food to have a percentage of rat hair. I mean, there's this tolerance level, I guess is the best way to say it. So, so for those folks that are saying, yeah, but you know, it's such a small per small amount, let's say the, the purple comes from toluene and there's, yeah, there's solvents in it and I'm buying a C60 product that's purple. Uh, and it's most likely, you know, it's got some of that stuff in there and, but it's such a, a minute amount that I'm, I'm probably getting more, you know, heavy metals driving down the freeway with my window open, um, than worrying about that. I mean, so like, but what's the, what's your take on that? Because is, is a exposure to this, these types of solvents in such a minute amount, is that a actual threat to people that's any worse than the threat they have, you know, driving or using chemicals, cleaning their house? Or, I mean, what, what's your, what's your opinion on that? Well, toluene is a gasoline additive, so you can breathe it in at the pump also. Mm -hmm. So, but I've had people come to me that have had, you know, yeah, it is a very small amount. That's correct. Okay. Um, for one serving they take of their two teaspoons of product, uh, yeah, you're probably, you're underneath the threshold. But if you take, you know, twice that, you're probably over the threshold for the minimum amount of toluene what you want to have in your body. And your body doesn't know what to do. It. You can't process toluene. Most people cannot process it. Let's put it that way. And so the toluene, what it does, your, your body will take and hide it or sequester it into your fat tissue of your, like your myelin sheath of your nerves, your, your brain, uh, your adipose tissue. So if you're a very robust person and you have a lot of adipose tissue around your gut, you're going to be able to hide more of this toluene in your body without having it be a problem. But if you're a, a, a thin person, um, yeah, and you don't have that many adipose tissue or that much fat on your body, you, you, you're going to have more of an effect for it. And I've had people come to me after taking, some people are more toluene intolerant than others. I've had some that have come to me that have taken these other products and they say, gosh, you, you talk about these solvents, tell me about them. And, and they ended up taking my product to detox from the toluene. Um, so yeah, yeah, and, and people say that, yeah, the carbon-60 will neutralize the toxic effects of the toluene. Yes, it will. But if you have too much in there, um, it's still a potential threat. So, and it does hide in your body. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so at the end of the day, though, it's bioaccumulative. Right. And, it, and, and everybody uh, has a different tolerance level towards toxins. And also there's people out there that are immunocompromised, which they can't handle anymore, right? They've reached their threshold, their bodies uh, past the equilibrium point where they can handle more toxins. So there are people that are going to actually, and you've actually, lots of customers, right, have come to you that have actually, you know, that are, that fall into that category where even a little mm -hmm. bit of toluene is going to affect them negatively, correct? That like, is I mean, correct. You, you mentioned to people, me, yeah, you yeah. mentioned to me that people have come to you and, and they've tried other C60 products and it's kind of making them ill, but... Uh, and they try yours and it doesn't have that effect. Is that correct? That is very correct. Yes. Okay. I've had people that, you know, they take some of these other C60 products that have contaminants in them. And I mean, I mean, they, I mean, they get diarrhea and, you know, they're for a month and then they stop taking it. And then they go to, then they take my product and uh, we've got a, there's a video on a, a lady that says exactly that. Oh, okay. And then, then they started taking my product and they, they, they don't have any of that, those, those issues at all. No, no diarrhea, no, no gut problems or, I mean, we've had a lot of, a lot of gut issues go away with carbon 60 because it stabilizes the, the biome in your body. Oh, that's fascinating. Oh, that, yeah. You know, I guess that, that really comes down to your toxic load and how you're able to deal with it. And actually, you know, like when, after you and I had met that one time, um, I actually went to my doctor and had a full on blood test done because i was taking in copious amounts of c60 and uh, i was worried you know and but i had them test my blood it came out negative but i never even thought to test for you know like test like my fatty tissues to see if it like if that's where it's going so that that's really an eye-opener and i don't think i want to go through that again but yeah i'm probably have accumulated a ton of it uh, not a ton but quite a bit of it over the years so that's interesting for those of you guys that have been taking c60 oil for a very long time um, and your uh, 
plump <laughs> like me. <laughs> you, you, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, but here's the other devil's argument though, Bob. So let me get your, uh, if you could, if you don't mind. Um, the other devil's ar argument that I've heard and read is, okay, well, C60 by its very nature is, uh, you know, an ROS scavenger. It's, 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 it, you know, eliminates toxins in the body. So even if the C60 I'm taking has a, you know, minute amount of toluene in it, um, wouldn't the C60 cancel it out? But you're saying that it doesn't, right? Or what's your point? I mean, what's your well, stance? Well, it, it does to some extent, but it doesn't cancel it all out because it's actually, you know, chemically bonded to the carbon 60 molecule already. So it's actually like a Trojan horse, bring it into your body. Um, yeah, whether it cancels it all out or not. Yeah, yeah there's, some, I, I, to answer your question, I don't know if it's mm -hmm. going to cancel it all out or cancel part of it out. But I have had people that were, tox that were toxic from toluene from taking these other carbon and they tested, they went to their doctor and they tested the, tol the toluene, how much was in their body, and they were, so they got on my carbon-60, and oh, so okay. my carbon-60 did neutralize it, so yeah, I would say to some extent it does, even the carbon-60 that has toluene will cancel out the toxicity effect of toxins by definition are molecules that come into your body and they're electron stealers. They steal electrons off of molecules making free radicals. Carbon-60 gives electrons to the free radical, stabilize them, gives an electron to the toxin, neutralizing their toxic effect so they can't do any damage. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm just, okay, so it is bioaccumulative. That's the key here. Hmm. That's the key. Yeah, so when, you know, so you had customers that tested positive for toluene, but... Do you know if they did a blood test or they actually tested their fatty tissues? Well, they, they, they I don't know. They did a blood test. I don't know exactly okay. what test yeah. they did, but they, it, was a, it was a blood test. It was wow. blood that they did. I don't know if they tested their fatty tissue. I haven't heard of anybody doing fatty yeah. tissue. It's yeah. mostly blood work. Wow. If you pick it up in the blood, that's serious. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's interesting to know because I was actually kind of worried about it back then. And then I kind of, have, I discounted it for all these years, but now you got me thinking about it again. <laughs> yeah. okay all right so hey you know uh i got another question um and uh, thanks for your time by the way I, I, but i just you know for the source material when you're mentioning uh synthesizing uh or concentrating c60 from a source of carbon i've got this running question and i run into shungite believers you know there's mm -hmm. some real strong shungite people out there um and, and you know and i'm just i just want to clarify something about in your opinion, as a carbon scientist, what is the purest form of source material to use when extracting C60? Because right now I, I know that, you know, the ARC, ARC, uh, you know, ARC guys, the ARC uh, reactor folks are using graphite, mm -hmm. right? They're using graphite to extract the C60. But uh, is, is that, I mean, what's your opinion? Is that, you know, and then there's also people that, you know, they've, they advertise that they've got charcoal C60, which I don't even understand, um, you know, how they're able to do that. But so what's your, what, like, what is the purest source of carbon to, to, you know, by which to then extract C60? And is it shungite or, you know, is shungite a possibility is the other well, question. Shungite is um, is is found over in Russia. It's Karelia, Russia. That's where a meteor, they, they presume a meteor struck millions of years ago, whenever, and it took, and it's, it was so so big, it caused a fireball and like a nuclear explosion. Took everything that all the vegetation that was on the ground, threw it all up in the air, and it, it came back and crystallized within the uh, the silica and the rock and stuff like that. So shungite's a, it's like a hard charcoal piece of charcoal. You can take a pocket knife and dig into it if you want to. Um, but but it does have some of the some of it did come back as C60 and it's in the shungite and they have different levels of quality of shungite ones with more carbon 60 and ones with less so yeah shungite is was kept a cold war secret a cold war uh, secret during the cold war and also uh, during World War II the Russians did not tell everybody about shungite because they just they were discovering it and it was the healing water the water that would come through the rock would pick up some of the carbon-60 molecules and they would drink it and very, very healing. And um, so, so it's a very good, and now the, the source where you can get, you can, there's carbon in many things. It's how you process it. You know, carbon, you know, and everything that this uh, plants, um, vegetables, you know, fish, all your meat contain carbon. So anything organic, organic means of having carbon. 
So anything organic is is carbon based. You know, it's not the organic you buy in a grocery store that means that they don't process it with without chemicals or pesticides. They call that organic, but or, organic by a scientific de definition means that it contains carbon in it. So yeah, so we 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 have we start off with a, a a base material that has carbon in it, and we strip everything off of it, and everything does come off of it. And then we reformulate it uh, back into the carbon 60 molecule. And it's a proprietary process. I can't go into too much detail details okay. or tell you what we use, but something that has carbon in it um, and it's very plentiful. <laughs> okay. All right. No, thanks. Appreciate that. Cause, cause I think you mentioned earlier that, you know, like even if you took um, activated charcoal, right. This right. form of carbon and you got it, you got the particulate size down to really, really, really small that it would have similar benefits. Would that have similar benefits to C60? Because carbon you know, carbon? I, I, I don't know. There's people mm. doing that out there. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, yeah. There was one company that they, they get it down to a very small. Activated charcoal, the activation process is when you take charcoal and you hit it with high pressure steam. And what happens, it, since it's, it's random, it's got different plates in different directions, like little tiny pieces of graphite, really. All, all the other the molecular structure it'll take that steam and push it through different angles so anyways you got charcoal that looks like swiss cheese it's got a bunch of holes in it from the steam and that's the activation process that gives it more surface area oh, okay yeah so so when you act when you see activated that means that it's got a lot of a lot of holes through it and so an increased surface area and that's why they use it for carbon water filters and so forth yeah. it'll adsorb a toxin and stick to it statically and that toxin's kind of trapped yeah, it works great for food poisoning too, I'll tell you. Right. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, so uh, second to the last question here. Um, what's your opinion of the other fullerenes that are now being marketed on the, uh, you know, that are being sold to the public, uh, specifically water-soluble C60? Uh, there's, I just did a video on that. I think there's, I found eight products out on the market that are selling uh, anything from a, a C60, uh, you know, hydroxylated C60 all the way up to a combination of C60 uh, and C70, uh, you know, fluorinols, um, and so forth. So, you know, th these new products are coming out on the market. I mean, what, what's your opinion of these? And do they add any, I mean, in other words, what do you think? And are they better or equal to than just buying C60 uh, that's already out there? I mean, I mean, what do you think of this this new product's of these new products that are coming out or this new, uh, you know, fullerene that's being marketed well, for health. Yeah, there's been quite a bit of studies, you know, on the hydrated fullerenes, if you want to call them that, the ones that have the OH group on it, uh, or you can have the aqueous um, uh, fullerenes, which which basically use a different type of a, a stat. It's like a, a small static charge. It's a very weak force that you can, that holds the water intact so you get like a a, a water around it and, and, and they're called london disper london dispersion forces they're very very small charges and so but it will protect or surround the carbon 60 molecule with water and so yeah yeah we we find with our water-based product our, our carbon 60 suspension product which is some it's a form of uh this this carbon 60 hydrated fullerene or aqueous suspension, um, that, yeah, we, we see better results with it as far as absorbing into the skin. It, well, it's more convenient for one thing. Um, it dries if you put it on topically. People have taken it orally also, but your body doesn't have to process. Your body's made out of water. It's not made out of olive oil or sunflower oil. So your body doesn't have to process the oil that's surrounding that in a liposomal form before it gets to the carbon 60. So in water, you don't have to process the oil off. It's already bioavailable. It's ready to go. And so we see um, uh, much, much faster uh, responses with the water-based product and with the oil product, longer lasting. So, I mean, it's ah, okay. it's, 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 it's kind of a, an even trade-off. You know, they, they both work very well. Um, we're looking more and more into the, you know, the aqueous, forms of carbon 60 ourselves you know okay. we, we find we find it very interesting there's a lot of reports on 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 the aqueous form of carbon 60 a lot of people are having difficulty of course we did too uh when we started out five or six years ago making that for that live rat brain 
And um, it, it's quite a process to put it into water. It's not something that you can just do. I don't, I don't recommend, and I don't think anybody could do it if, if you're a home user and you want to buy carbon 60 power to put it in water, you know, good luck. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, it took me years to figure that out. And then once I got it figured out, it took me <laughs> months to get it near perfected. And that's all. I'll, it, it's near perfected. You know, it's very, very close. Yeah. Well, I know that I know you can actually go out and specifically go to like, you know, Solaris Chem or MTR and, and purchase fluorinols, right? Mm -hmm. And then just, and then of course you just, it's a concentrate and then you would add it to water and then people are selling it as a product. Uh, I do know that there are manufacturers out there or commercial sellers that are actually producing their own fluorinols and then selling it as a product as well. So uh, there's two different approaches right off the bat. Um, just like C60. But I, you know, I was doing the research on it and I was just thinking like what you just said. I think uh, I agree with it. The more I research it, the more, in, the more fascinating it is because we are water-based beings and it's definitely more bioavailable because it's water-based um, as opposed to, uh, you know, lipid-based. So, so there's some definitely, uh, there's definitely some promise. So I'm about to do a trial uh, on myself and, and see how, how it works for me. Uh, so the other the other issue here on supplement is the carbon nano onions. Now you had mentioned that um, you had mentioned carbon nano onions. So if you could, if you don't mind, uh, a little education for me. But I was under the impression that a carbon nano onion is one of the family of fullerenes, and that you've got multiple different fullerenes trapped within each one of its cages, and it forms an onion. But then when we talked about these, uh, you know, these electron microscope photos. You were mentioning that that this was a carbon nano onion, but it's if it's only C60, it's not an onion, right? They're not inside of each other. They're kind of stuck to each other as opposed to a traditional fullerene carbon nano onion, which is a cage within a cage within a cage. Right. Yeah, that's right. what is they that call correct? carbon nano onion. It's a cage within a cage in a cage. Yeah. But as you can see... The, maybe the one in the middle of the cage has got 60 carbon atoms. The next uh -huh. one probably has 300. And then the next one probably has, you know, 500. Right. You know, I mean, they're, they're not all carbon 60. So, yeah, my, my, my little green men aren't small enough to get in there and tell you exactly what we okay. have, what these other people have. <laughs> and I don't think anybody can tell. It's all theoretical on paper. The, it's what really accounts is the end results. If you take the product you don't have any negative interactions, which we we don't. We have had no, no negative interactions with our products. But we had people allergic to sunflower oil and things like that, or people don't like it because our product is very, very black. They don't like it because it's black or they're, you know, or, or the sunflower oil. But besides that, we have a, no negative interactions or contraindications with medications. Mm -hmm. So it's the end result product is what you what you see that happens. If you can spray the hydrated fullerene or water-based product uh, on on your skin and you get pain relief, you know, hey, that's what you want, and with no negative, no toxicity, no downside. Yeah. Okay. No, thanks for that. Yeah, because I've you know in my research, it's like I've only found there's only one product out there that advertises itself as a carbon nano onion fullerene supplement, and right. it's only one, and it has and. And it's been that way for five years and it's never gone anywhere. It's never, it's just never left the launch pad. Uh, so I've been, I kind of, I've been keeping an eye on that product and nothing's happened. No, nobody else has gotten there. It seems like the market is moving towards water soluble C60, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, that's really, that's interesting. So, Hey, I appreciate all of this. And I just got one last question because I know um, a lot of the folks that watch my videos, you know, they're, they're, they're DIYers, right? They, they like to make their own C60. I've been making my own C60 since like 2018. And after our discussion about, quote, you know, about part of, you know, particulate size and contaminants and solvents and, and everything you, you know, you've shared with me, you know, like, what, what's your advice? I mean, because it just sounds like running off to MTR and buying some C60, <laughs> making my own in my oil. Um, you know, it, it, you know, it, it quote, it's, is, you know, like I call it like home grade good enough. Um, yeah. but then there's the idea of, you know, let's do it right. Like, you know, like you're doing and some of the other, you know, um, high end, uh, manufacturers are, but, but so what is, what's your advice for the DIY guys, uh, in terms of like making your own C60 at home, but then also, you know, being conscious about contaminant solvents and, and bioavailability. What are your, what are your recommendations? Well, all the carbon sixty powder you're going to purchase out there 
is solvent produced one way or another? Either they start it, then they sublime it, or they don't sublime it. They just use the HPLC to separate it to increase the concentration of the carbon-60 molecules. So they all have trace amount of solvents, and if they're all their particle sizes are very large, yeah, you can mix it for a couple of weeks and you know knock some of those molecules down in size and break some things off. Yeah, it it works. It's very it, you know it it does. You get a slight amount of toxicity and you get very you know. But the, but the larger particles do get people that aren't filtering it. They're definitely getting caught in their 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 liver as they showed in my studies. You know. Um, we used to make, and we stopped doing it. We made what we call the concentrate, yeah, and it sort of switches like. off to the left. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we did that for about two months, and we said, you know, it, we basically we took it and put carbon sixty in sunflower oil at a concentrate level, and they could take that and basically dump it into a, a, a like a liter of um, olive oil. So now they got the standard product that everybody else has out there. They got carbon sixty now in olive oil. And we did that for a couple of months and we felt so bad because all it does is take, make people take more olive oil. And so we felt bad, you know, we're, we're really deceiving the public or tricking them into taking more of olive oil, which you don't want to consume excessive quantities. And so, so we, we stopped doing that. We don't sell any kind of concentrate anymore. It's, it's, it's just straight out of the bottle right now and just put it in your mouth. There's no need to take excessive amounts of oil. We only, our, our serving size is only an eighth of a teaspoon. And we have about 50,000 times more bioavailable molecules than anybody else on the market. So, okay. Yeah, I was going to was... make it at home, do it. But yeah, uh, no, no. Cause I actually uh, bought, I bought some of this concentrate and I was, and I was to quote DIY at home. Right. Cause I was buying C60 from everybody and trying different, uh, uh, you know, suppliers. And so I bought a bottle, I made a liter and then I, you know, and then I used it and I went to go back to the website and it wasn't for sale anymore. Yeah. And I, I never, I never called you to say, why did you take it off the market? But that makes so much sense. You're right. I mean, why not just take the, the, the little bottle? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Why, why, why subject yourself to all that oil? You're allowed about a teaspoon a day of olive oil, you know, according to some of the studies out there, that's plenty. That's your hundred percent serving size. You're, you know, uh, whatever, whatever, you know, your serving size that you're supposed to be taking. So why, why, why take more oil? Cause you get it in bread, you get it in other, you know, ingredient and other foods that you eat too. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I was going to, oh, thanks for saying that. I was going to ask you this question where you've got this one part of your website here where you talk about serving oh, yeah. size right? and you make this comparison, uh, about, you know, like these other products out there and the cost per day. Um, so when you say serving size, because yours is so much more bioavailable, you have you don't have to take as much, and that's why it's uh, more cost effective. Or, yes. Or that's yeah, the, okay. Yeah, that's you, why that's what this means. Yeah, it's, it's basically our serving size is only an eighth of a teaspoon, and okay. wow, you know you're, you're getting over a hundred billion carbon sixty molecules. These other products is typically two teaspoons that you have to take. So you're taking mostly oil. And you can see that all these other ones are clear. They look like olive oil or whatever whatever oil that they put them in or, um, you know, or coconut oil or MCT, whatever. You know, they, they're, all, they're all clear. You can't see the carbon in there. They just, they have some in there, but they're few and far between. They're spaced out so the light passes right through it. When you have an abundance of tiny, 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 tiny particles, they block the light. Oh, okay. and so that's why ours is black and everybody else is clear. And, you know, and, and yeah, the, the cost per serving is, you know, hey, we produce our own carbon 60. My mission, our mission statement is to provide a clean carbon 60 at an affordable cost to help people with health. Yeah, well, no, that makes shelf. sense. That's our mission statement. Yeah, I was just trying to, because so these other folks is, quote, serving size. Is that the standard two teaspoons per day that you Correct. find on all the calculators. Correct. All right. So then, yeah. so these all, are, these guys are all serving you two teaspoons per day. Yours is an eighth because you just don't need, you don't, you know, cause it's so concentrated. Okay. That's what that means. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. And you're actually, I think one of the interesting things too, for people that don't know, but you, your, your products classified as food, right? In an FDA certified lab. Well, well, yeah. Food grade carbon 60. Food grade, yeah is what it is and 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 when you, when you identify something as food grade it has no toxins in it 
And that's basically what has no negative effects or no no downside. And that's mm -hmm. what we have. We have no no toxicity in our in our product at all. So mm -hmm. these other ones that have the toxicity in it, that they also put, you know, Proposition 65, they bury it in the back of their website somewhere and make some reference to it. Uh, but at least they have it on their website, and that's what's required by the FDA, that if you're produced with with uh, toxins or toxicity um, in the in the California realm of business where that's where they push the proposition 65 that it that it does have some uh, toxicity or carcinogens in the product okay so i guess last question so you know for the for the vendors that sell product uh, the powder right and and it ends up in all these commercial products but you know these guys are advertising solvent free or human grade right mm -hmm. uh so what what so what you just described is that considered human grade because it's fda Right, it's FDA standards, uh, Prop sixty five. Uh, you know, well, well, Prop sixty five is a California, you know. Uh, right, that's their special you know, thing. Whatever. There's yeah. there's no FDA standards set, and that's what Fadi Musa even said on the second oh. publication that he put out in uh, two thousand and nineteen. He said, you know, there's no standard set in in the carbon sixty world. They do have contaminants in them, and they are they are solvents. You know, some of my competitors. They only started to taking their own product three or four years ago because they cleaned it up better to a what what they call a, a, a you know a, a safer standard. You know, it's not mm. safe. You know, I mean, I mean, uh, but it's not. You know, I, I don't know how toxic it is. It depends upon your your toxicity threshold. You know, so it, it varies from person to person. Okay, all right. So, so the final question again, going back to the DIY. Um, what would your recommendation be? I mean, is it if if you know people still want to make their own at home and they want to go the olive oil route, um, is there a is it just no matter what it's it's safer to go with sublimated versus you know uh, you know solvent treated uh, you know if you just wanted to minimize risk or is you, it just to the you, point you, where you, no I don't think uh, you know if you want to well you can minimize it you go to a you know a one that they say that they bake it out more but that's only the volatile solvents there's still we we've done smear tests and i've got a smear video on there that shows that we've taken carbon 60 powder and actually scratched it with a, a razor blade on a piece of white paper and yeah. you can see all the residue that's in there i mean by by looking at it, it it's it's all yellow it, you yeah. know that's carbon 60 and solvents with the solvents attached so i i you know I, I wouldn't, I, I offered to pay my employees. I said, we did a study on this. Hey, anybody want to try this for a month? Some of these other products, I'll pay you $5,000 to take one of these other products for a month. And I had no takers, <laughs> you know, and because cause we, we, we know better. And, and like I said, even some of these other manufacturers would not even take their own, pro their own product until four years ago. You know, they, they yeah. just didn't take it. So, I mean, I've been exposed to, I've been taking carbon 60 or exposed to it and taking it longer than probably anybody else for 12 years in the world. I mean, I, and, and I, I, I take my product and then I'll, I'll stop taking it for a while. And then I will feel myself slow down, feel older, a little more sluggish, not so active or mentally clear. And then I'll take some of my product and, you know, that just, just a, just a dropper full of it. And, you know, within two minutes, I'm back in the game. You know, I, I can tell it activates my, my body and gets me gets me going all right no thank yeah. you for that i appreciate it um good to know um makes me have to kind of reevaluate <laughs> yeah. uh, my approach <laughs> um yeah okay yeah yeah because uh um yeah i'm just thinking it over now it really makes me makes me have to think about it well, but, well, yeah. well, well try it out i mean you said you were going to do a test to try in some of these uh water-based uh fullerenes uh, yeah I'm trying. Was, a, I'm trying a yeah, Florinol product for. Well, the let next. me let me send you one one of our bottles so you can try it and and see what you think of it. Okay. And so you can put us in a comparison. That's all. Yeah. No, I appreciate that because um, yeah, I just uh, I had to st I stopped taking my own C60 oil because I I buy from Solaris through Layla Labs. Yeah. Um, and it's like nine point nine five, uh, you know, quote solvent free. Um, and um, and I make my own C60 oil. I've been doing that for years. Uh, but then I stopped doing that. I waited two weeks to let it flush out, and then I'm going to try a fuller and all trial. But yeah, I, I would I wouldn't mind at all. I thank you very much because yeah, I'm starting to think about you know as I get older and I'm you you know just you get older and you start you you just reach that point where you bioaccumulated so much garbage over so long 
no matter how many times I try to do detox routines, you know, I'm just trying to keep mm -hmm. up my energy, you know, and it, it's harder and harder as we get older. Um, so yeah, no, that's, that's a lot of food for thought. So thank you very much for that. Uh, okay. So, Hey Bob, you know, I just want to say right. thank you so much for your time. This is fascinating. And thank you for clearing up so much stuff for me. Uh, you know, I've been studying this stuff and dinking around with it for, I don't know, five years now um or something like that or more than that, like six seven years uh yeah. and you know and i learned something every time so you know thank you very yeah. much for your time well yeah and if anybody wants to contact us please visit our website you know c-60.com yeah. we have it up there or you know give us a call you know we have an open phone line we have a live person that answers the phone uh, a lot of times it's myself and our phone number if i could say it is 720 oh, yes. 600 6040 Again, that's a 720-600-6040. And call anytime. Literally, anytime is fine. All right. Yeah, Bob is very reachable. So I just want to say thank you, Bob. His All website right. is c-6.com. Link in the video description below. If you want to reach me, I'm at the tinkers.academy. That's my blog. Um, any parting words, Bob? Just want to say thank you very much. No, stay healthy. And, uh, you know, let's get through these difficult times we're going through right now with everything that's going on in this crazy world that we're having. And, um, you know, just stay healthy, keep those toxins out of your body and keep clean with carbon 60. All right. Thank you very much, Bob. I really All appreciate right. your time. Thanks, Kay.